Today, we are focusing on a microprocessor lab program that is to convert a 16-bit binary value to BCD and to display it from left to right and right to left for a specific number of time on a 7-segment display interface. What exactly is BCD? BCD, binary coded decimal, is a class of binary encodings of decimal numbers, where each decimal digit is represented by a fixed number of bits. For example, 10 will be represented as follows in binary, where the value of each bit will be the power of 2. Hence, to find the BCD, we just have to multiply the bits with its corresponding 2's power. So, for the 16 bit, we need 4 decimal numbers, as each number takes 4 bits. In our example, we took the binary as FF, which gives the corresponding BCD as 255. So, our task is to take the binary value and to display its corresponding BCD in the 7 segment display. Cool, it seems simple, but how to do it? To convert 16 bit binary into BCD, we know that there are 4 decimal numbers that will be stored in data. We just have to take the modulus of data with 10 and have to divide it 10. Hence, we get each decimal as a BCD. This will be continued for 4 times to get 4 decimal numbers. Now, can you tell me what should be there in the data segment? Since the program is simple, we need only a small memory structure which has one data and one code segment. In data segment, let's initialize the hardware kit port A to 40B0 and all other ports corresponding to it. And control word will be having the value ATH as we are only displaying the output in a hardware kit. And for the in user interface, let's take the message as press any key to exit in M1. And the output message with the spaces to store the BCD values, which is bounded by 4FF for displaying purpose. We also need the table of 10 codes to indicate 0 to 9. And we are having an array of 5 which is used to store the resulting BCD. And num will have the input data. In our case, we took it as 0FF. How did you got those codes in the table? 7 segment display has 4 shift register with 8 bit serial in parallel out. There are 8 LEDs labeled as A2H where H is a decimal point. And 0 bit indicates on and 1 bit indicates off. As per the circuit diagram, if you want to display 0 in a 7 segment display, then A, B, C, D, E and F should be on. So the value of these letters will be 0. And G and H will be 1. So we'll get the code as C0. Similarly, for 4, it is 9, 9. You can follow the same procedure for any number to display it in a 7 segment display. Let's start tracing the code. First, we need to initialize the data segment. And also, we need to initialize the hardware kit with the control word CW that is being assigned with 80. And we have a message as press any key to exit in the label M1 that we have to display in the monitor. In order to do that, we have to have it in the DX register. Once we have it in the DX register, we can display in the monitor using service number 09 with interrupt 21H. Now let's start converting 16-bit binary to BCD by calling a bin SSC procedure. When we call the bin SSC procedure, the BCD which is the destination array should be pointed to SI and the input number num will be stored in the AX. As per the algorithm, let's take a resistor BX with a value 10,000 and let's convert it to BCD by calling it procedure conversion. In the conversion procedure, we will assign the DX register with 0 and we will divide by BX. This will actually divide the AX with BX. That is, AX already has 00255 and BX has 10,000. When you do div BX, that is AX by BX, the quotient will be stored in AL and the remainder will be stored in DX. So the 0 will be there in AL that has to be stored in the position of the BCD. 
So let's store the value of AL in content of SM where the BCD's first value will be 0. So when we return from the conversion procedure back to the bin SSC procedure, we will have the BX with the value 1000. We will continue the procedure again. In this case, we have AX as 0255 and BX as 1000. Now when we divide AX by BX, AL will be 0 again and BX will be 255 that will be stored in AX. Hence, this AL will be stored in the content of SI that is 0 and BX is there in the AX. When we come back from procedure conversion back to the procedure bin SSC, BX will be 100 and this procedure continues storing 2 in the position of BCD and again BX will be 10 and hence it stores the value AL as 5 in the position of BCD as 5. Then the DX will be 5 that indicates that DL has 5. This value will be directly stored to the content of SI as move content of SI, DL. Now we have an array of BCD with the value 00255. Now we got the converted value of 16 bit binary to BCD. We just have to replace these values in the message. In the data segment, we already have a message with the space left to store the BCD value and also a table in order to represent 0 to 9 with the coded values. So at this position, we have a array of BCD with the value 00255 and in the data segment, we have a message that is with the spaces of 5 and bounded with the FF and the table with the coded values to represent 0 to 9. Let's uh, put this BCD value in the spaces of the message. How to do that? Let's assign SI to the starting of the BCD and DI to the position MSG plus 8 and BX to the table. That is, SI will be pointing to the starting of the BCD and DI will be pointing to the 8th position of the message and BX will be pointing to the starting of the table. So, as there are 5 values in the BCD, we need a CX register that is counter of 5. So, move 5 to CX. For each loop, we need to have the content of SI in the AL. That is, this 0 will be stored in the content of AL. So, AL will be having the value 0. When we give the instruction XLAND, that will actually set the AL with the value content of BX plus AL. That is, BX plus AL, as AL is 0, BX is the starting position of the table, it will directly point to the starting position of the table, that is C0. C0 will be there in AL, so when we do more content of DI, comma AL, that will actually put the value of AL, that is C0, in the 8th position of message, that is C0 will be inserted in the 8th position. When we do the decrement DI and increment SI, that will shift the DI to 7th position of the message and the SI to the 2nd position of the BCD. And we will continue the procedure again. Since AL will have the content 0 and after excellent AL will be having the value C0 as the code and this C0 will be stored to the 7th position of the message. and Again, decrement DI and increment SI. So the SI will be pointing to the third position of the BCD and DI will be pointing to the sixth position of the message. Now, the content of SI will be 2. So, the AL will be having 2 when we do the X line that is BX plus 2. That will be BX plus 2 will indicate starting position to the second position that is is 4. So AL will be having the value A4 that is to be stored in the message in the position 6. So the content of DA that is A4 will be stored in the 6th position of the message. When we decrement the DA and increment the SI, SI will be pointing to the 4th position of BCD and DA will be pointing to the 5th position of the message. Now the AL will have the value of SI that is 5. So AL will be 5 and when we do XLAND that is BX plus 5 that will point BX 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is 92 will be stored in AL. This AL value will be stored in the message that is 92 in the position of 5. DI will be decremented again and SI will be decremented again, uh, incremented again. Hence, the final value of the AL will be 5 that will give the coded code value as 92 that in turn will be stored in the position of 4 in the message. So we got the message with the BCD values in it. So we just have to display this message in the order left to right and right to left in the service segment display. For that we have taken the register BH with the value 10 and we also assign DI to the beginning of the message. You may be wondering why BH should be 10. As we know that message consists of 13 values. In order to display all these 13 values in the several segment display where it can only display 4 at a time, we need 10 iteration. So, BH should be 10 and DI will be pointing to the beginning of the message. Let's start displaying from left to right. For that, let's have a another pointer SI pointing to DI that is the beginning of the message. And in order to preserve the value of BX, let's push it into the star. And for displaying in the hardware key, let's call the procedure display message. We'll see the procedure display message. Since we can only display four digit at a time in a seven segment display, and each digit has eight bits, we'll assign value four to the counter register CX and 8 to the register BL. We'll move the content of SI to AL. Here we are displaying a digit bit by bit. So to take the first bit from the digit, we'll rotate AL by 1. Here we are moving first bit to port B. In order to preserve the value of AX, we'll push it into the stack. We need to initialize the LEDs. For that, we'll move 00 to port C and again 11 to port C. Once the initialization has done, let's pop out the value of the AX from the stack. Then we'll decrement the value of the BL. At the end of, the, at the end of this statement, one bit has been displayed on a seven segment display. Now the value of the BL will be seven. Here we are checking whether BL is equal to zero or not. If it is not equal to 0, then again we will continue the same procedure. If it is equal to 0, then we will move on to the next instruction. Once the BL is equal to 0, it means that one digit has been displayed in a 7 segment display. Then we will increment the value of SI. Now the SI will be pointing to the next digit. Then we will loop for ne next character to display next digit. Once all four digit has been displayed in a seven segment display, will come out of this procedure. The first four digits has been displayed in the seven segment display. After displaying the first set, we may need a time lap to display the next set. So let's call a procedure called delay. Procedure is nothing but giving an extra task to the processor. Here we are using two registers CX and BX for looping purpose. To preserve the value of CX and BX, let's push it into the stack. We'll assign some large number FFFF for CX as well as BX. Here we are decrementing the value of the BX until it becomes 0. Once it becomes 0, we'll loop back to the N3. It will automatically decrement the value of the CX. Once both CX and BX become 0, we'll come out of this procedure. Hence, we'll give the time lag. Including delay, we also need to check whether the user wants to exit from the program or not. For that, we will call the procedure KBH. In the procedure KBH, using the service 01 with interrupt 16H, we will check whether any key is pressed in the keyboard or not. If it is not zero, we will jump to the label exit where the program will be terminated by using 4CH with interrupt 21H. If it is 0, we will return from the procedure. Then we will restore the value of BX and also we will increment the DI to point to the next digit of the message and decrement the BX 
indicating that the next set of digits should be displayed in the seventh segment. So the next set of digit will be displayed until left to right displaying is finished. After that, let's start from right to left. Further, again we need to assign BH with 10 indicating all the 10 sets and also DI to the 9th position of the message. So for right to left, DI will be pointing to C0. To display from right to left, it is same as left to right. We have to initialize the SI to DI that is the ninth position of the message and we have to push the value of BX to restore the value and then we have to call display message in order to display the four set of numbers in the seven segment display and call delay to get the time lapse between the each set and check for the key pressed by using the procedure KBH. Pop out the register BX to restore the value of BX. Then decrement DI and decrement BH to go for next set of digits. This will be continued until all the values of the message is displayed from right to left. Once this is done, we will again start displaying from left to right by jumping to start. This will continue until the user wants to exit from the execution. So that's the end of the program. Now let's start executing the program. In the terminal, just go to the folder Masm and create a file with .asm extension. In there, you can write the assembly level code. As you can see, we have already written the program. You just have to save the program and go back to the terminal to compile the program. To compile the program, just type masm file name .asm and then link the compiled program. In order to execute the program, first you need to initialize the hardware key. As we have already initialized with IOPM, we will just directly execute the program. As you can see the message press any key to exit in the monitor, the output will be displayed on the hardware key from left to right fashion. The hardware key that we have used is common cathode 7 segment display. You can also use common anode 7 segment display. The delay between the displaying of each digit can be reduced by giving small number to CX and BX register in the delay procedure. So now it is displaying from right to left. As we have given the input 0FF, the output is 00255. You can give any input that are 16 bit binary value. For example, to check for any other input, let's go to the program. In there, the number value will be changed to 0F6. For the 16 bit binary 0F6, the BCD value will be 00246. So when you exe execute the program, you can see the value in the key as 00246. So you can try for any input. That's it. Thank you for watching our video. We are Dikshita and Deepa from NMIMT Nikte. If you find this video useful, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.